the awful truth about carbon deposits in modern engines. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Hit me up on the website. For that, I have a Renault Clio RS Sport about a year old and it is having the first service after the very first free checkup last year. The service department reported that intake manifold has carbon deposit buildup and needs to be cleaned out at a cost of 190 smackers. Normally 250 bucks. They said that the car needs to be driven long distances to prevent buildup. I had recently travelled to Sale, Victoria and back in February 2020. Should I believe this? Can I use an additive to clean deposits if indeed deposits exist? Very difficult indeed. <laughs> Think you'd agree? To diagnose the existence or non-existence of carbon deposits in one's inlet system, by email at least. Anyway, let's talk about this more generally, because Frank's Clio has direct injection, like the majority of new cars today. And I have owned a Clio Renault Sport, and it was friggin' awesome. Last of the manuals, an insane cornering machine. Lots of fun. Bit harsh, but fun. And I must have been that lucky dude, because I owned it for like five years, and nothing went wrong with it. So, there's that. Anyway... With direct injection, okay, a fuel injector sits properly inside the combustion chamber and it injects fuel directly into that chamber at exactly the right time relative to the position of the piston with the valves closed, hence the name. Injection directly into the chamber equals direct injection. Go figure. Fuel is thus completely separate from the inlet air system, at least until the inlet air gets into the cylinder. Okay, In the older port-style fuel injection system, a far less high-tech injector was located in the inlet port right on top of the inlet valve, and this tended to wash the valve by spraying the valve more or less continuously with fuel, which is, as we know, quite a powerful solvent. But it was a fairly wasteful and imprecise way of delivering fuel compared with direct injection. So, with direct injection, only air goes into the inlet system and also crankcase vapours which are sucked in via the PCV system for positive crankcase ventilation. So all of that aerosolised oil and stuff like that in the crankcase gets burned through the engine via the inlet system. And also some exhaust gas is recirculated, that's called EGR for exhaust gas recirculation. And, you know, although they are coarsely filtered, crankcase vapours tend to be quite a bit oily and recirculated exhaust gas can be a bit hot, even though it is water-cooled to try and ameliorate that. So if you mix those oily vapours and the hot EGR gas, you can kind of burn the oily vapours to an oily carbon residue and give the inlet manifold and the ports the equivalent of atherosclerosis over time. This happens quite a lot if the EGR or PCV systems are defective or badly designed off the bat. So premature profound carbonisation is often a symptom of a problem with PCV or EGR. So just cleaning the inlet manifold and the ports, that's really not going to help if one of those things is defective because, hey, it's not solving the problem, right? If you don't drive on the open road all that much for minimum about an hour a fortnight ballpark, your engine oil is going to get pretty contaminated, okay? And this is due to the high-tech miracle of blow-by. The contaminants are mainly water and soot and a bit of unburned fuel, and they blow by the rings, hence the name. And if you're wondering where the water comes from in all of this, it's just from basic chemistry. Fuel plus oxygen, which we call burning goes to water and CO2 and there's a lot of focus on CO2 obviously and everyone forgets about the water. So it's quite hot down there obviously. So the water exists as steam which blows by the rings as a gas and it condenses to liquid water in the crankcase when you shut the engine down later and go and do whatever. 
The PCV vapors get a bit filthier than usual, of course, when the oil is contaminated and it makes the oil thinner too. So this can lead to the formation of significant oily sooty deposits in the inlet tract. <laughs> which is a good idea to clean up before it gets really, really serious and impacts engine performance. It's a problem mainly for engines that do only short trips and lots of cold starts, okay? At least that exacerbates the formation of this sludge in the inlet. The EGR tends to bake it all on, but frankly, this tends to be more profound on a diesel engine, which does a lot more volume of EGR as a proportion of total operational flow. Going for a long drive every few months is insufficient to purify the oil, or at least to keep it pure. The open road driving has to be reasonably regular to do that. So just to be clear on this, the highway driving does not clean up any contamination already in the inlet plumbing, okay? Once it's there, it's kind of there. If it's there and it's serious enough, you need to get it cleaned away mechanically, like if the degree of contamination is likely to affect the engine's operation. The purpose of the highway driving, and the reason people recommend this, is it purifies the engine oil and thus it prevents the deposits from forming in the first place. That highway style lean burning and sustained full operating temperature just evaporates off all the water and the volatile components of unburned fuel which exit via the PCV and then nosedive into your engine once again. So. If you're not going to do that regular highway driving, it's a pretty good idea to get your oil changed a bit more often, say twice a year, instead of the standard sort of annual servicing that goes with cars these days. But still try to get out on the highway as often as you can, okay? 30 to 60 minutes routinely, as often as you can, is a really good target. It's pretty hard to see at least to me, how an additive could hope to address this issue. Mainly because fuel additives never actually touch the inlet air system where the problem actually is. So the purported solution of additives and the problem, contamination, they never physically interact. So I don't see how that could work. And finally, for all of you beard stroking, let's call you... Uh, dipshits who seem to think that direct injection is the problem here and you know who you are i'm sure you'll be in the comments telling me how awesome carburetors were the only thing multi-point fuel injection did like the older kind was to wash the inlet valve okay the manifold and the port still got gummed up to some degree Carburetors did wash everything, but they basically doubled your fuel bill and they were hideously unresponsive. So there's that. Oil dilution, carbonization of the inlet system, these things, they're actually as old as engines. PCV systems have been around since the 70s. EGR is hardly new either. You know, highway running has always been the primary line of defense against carbon based inlet atherosclerosis. About the only thing that has changed is ring tension in the bores, okay? They backed that off quite a bit over the past decade or so, mainly to fight internal friction and improve fuel economy, but it does allow somewhat greater blow-by. Nobody ever gives engine designers the credit they deserve for saving you money on fuel. Compared with older engines, modern engines deliver the same performance with half the capacity and half the fuel consumption. And yet, people still find reasons to bitch about it. <laughs> I freaking love human nature. 